Well, Craig, the Toronto Maple Leafs have been an interesting team this year. Feels like they have underachieved, even though they're on close to a 100-point pace. Feels like it's been a grind, even though their best players are having great years. But it certainly feels like they are not an elite-level team right now. So the one big question for the Leafs is, can the right trade deadline moves turn them into a cup contender this year? Yes, it can. If you look at where the Toronto Maple Leafs excel, we know offensively they are brilliant. Those four players up front are fantastic. And scoring an offense is not a problem. So it's not just about where they're at going into this year's Stanley Cup playoffs. They're pot committed to the group. That includes Morgan Riley on the back end. And when you're pot committed to a group that you believe in, I think you have to strengthen the, the, the players around them. And where I would go, I'd go right to the blue line. Not one defender, but two defenders. And where I would go if I were Brad Trey Living, to a place I'm very familiar with, the Calgary Flames. You add Noah Hannafin, you add Chris Tanev, I believe that that helps your team not only be a better contender this year, but into the next few years, if you can get those guys signed. Now that's a, a big question mark, but that's where they have to go. When they acquired Jake Muzzin, I thought it was such a perfect acquisition for what they were trying to do. And yes, you may have to sacrifice some forwards, not, not the top four, some other ones, but to sacrifice some forwards, the scoring isn't an issue with those guys to bolster that back end that could help them not only this year, but in the next years to come. No question those players are going to help the Toronto Maple Leafs. My issue, though, Craig, is at what cost? To go get that kind of quality and multiple defenders would be an upgrade for sure. They're not going to want players off the roster. They're going to want all your best young players, your Mintons, your Cowans, your first-rounders. And where does that leave you going forward? I understand they've committed to this group. They've committed to this path. But I don't know what their team looks like if they bring those players in. And I don't know if even those kind of players are enough to get both defenders into Toronto. I just think feasibility to get the amount of stuff that Toronto seems to need, which to me, it would go one defender. I think they need forwards, Craig. Like, I think we've talked a lot about the Toronto Maple Leafs big four guys scoring. It's only been the big four guys scoring for a really long time. It feels like with Bertuzzi not getting it done offensively, even though he gets chances, Max Domi hasn't got a ton of goals. They might need more offense as well. I think my priority list would go defense, forward, forward, another defense and that kind of volume of quality Craig almost feels too much to ask with the amount of assets that they have so that's where I'm not sure a trade deadline can turn them into a cup contender this year because they have too many needs to deal with all in the next couple weeks and you're absolutely right about what it's going to cost but when you're pot committed to the players that they're committed to and, and believe in as they should you now have to make sure that you strengthen around them. So I, I continuously go back to the Vegas Golden Knights. And what they showed is we're going to be bold. It doesn't mean you're always going to get the result you wanted to want to get, but they were bold. And since the time they entered the league in 2017 till right now, they have demonstrated that they're going to go after it and they're going to be bold. No guarantees. But if you're not going to be bold, where's it going to get you? Yes, you can wait to the offseason. And, and yes, it's complicated. And yes, it's not easy to do. But I would like to see the Toronto Maple Leafs go and be bold. If it's forwards, go. Go after it. If it's defenders, go after it. But the price that you're going to have to pay is a price to being good now. And the price of not being bold, I think, is far greater than any price you pay to try to improve your team. One of the other factors you have to take into consideration is where are we relative to the rest of the league? And this has been Toronto's problem for the last several years because to me, the two best teams in the East, guess what? They're in the Atlantic Division. Toronto is probably going to have to go through Florida and then into Boston to try to get to the conference final and get through two rounds finally. That is also part of your decision-making process. Like, I would feel more comfortable being uber-aggressive in the Metro than I would in the Atlantic because I just look at the matchups and where Toronto is right now, even if you're able to add one of those good defensemen, if you're able to add one better forward, I still don't know if I like their chances against Florida or Boston. Part of the challenge being a Toronto Maple Leaf GM right now is can we beat the teams that we're very likely to play in the first and second round? Here's a suggestion. Fall into the wild card spot that finds you into the Metro. <laughs> I know. There we go. There's that can play out. <laughs> 
there, there's how you find a path. Not an easy path for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Lots of questions, but it'll be interesting to see what they do heading into the deadline. Yeah, absolutely. They, they are. Brad Trey Living gets another chance at remaking the team. He took one crack at it last summer, Craig. It probably didn't go exactly as he would have hoped. He gets another crack at it at the deadline, and he cannot make mistakes this time.